I once thought that I could never be good at building, that I'd be the master of dirt houses okay. forever. Then all that changed with this 30 day challenge. And you have a choice too. To stay as Steve forever, or... Well, you probably don't have to be as dramatic as me, but a 30 day challenge, that's what this video is about. Okay, but like, why? Well, I want to build faster and have the confidence to take on projects like this epic dragon or this colorful pirate ship. I think I can and you can too. You see, there's this mod called Axiom that has revolutionized building, and for the next 30 days I'm going to learn everything it can do and become the best possible builder I can. Oh, and one more thing before we jump into this 30 day challenge, I want to introduce you to my friend Avid. Oh, I said his name, here he comes. <laughs> Hey. Dude, that entrance was sick. Oh my god. I know, I'm kind of a, you know, command block wizard and genius and all those things. Made this whole adventure map you're on right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought you only made stuff with command blocks, but you made this? Um, I didn't know you built too. Yeah, you know, I pretty much only do command block stuff, but I, I figured why not try out Axiom? And with a process and a way, I, I was able to make something like this, yeah. And for the next five minutes, I basically just drooled over Avid's build because it's really good. And it goes to show that someone with no experience building can create some amazing stuff using Axiom. So let's go see what I can do. As I've been building for four years now, there's a lot of things that just come naturally to me. But hopefully in this video, I can teach you a thing or two about building and maybe a bit about Axiom too. For day one, I found this nice little spot where I want to build a simple house and just get used to some of Axiom's tools and how they work. Naturally, any person would be overwhelmed opening oh. Axiom's main interface, oh, no. which is why we're taking this house step by step. To get the shape of the house, I'm just placing a simple cube with the shape tool, then using the extrude tool to extend the walls out and make it more rectangular. I like to build out a wool first, and then we'll go in and texture later. And only 20 minutes later of using basically those two tools, we have ourselves a pretty nice wool outline, so it's time to texture it. As you know, I kind of have just a natural feeling for building since I've been doing it for so long, but if you want to get good at building, really the only way to do it is practice. The point of this challenge is to practice using these awesome tools provided by Axiom, because it truly makes building way more accessible for anyone and everyone. After after texturing, I added some details like overhang, shutters, and buttons, which just give it a nice rustic feeling. And for day one, it's pretty clear to see how powerful this mod is. In just two hours, I was able to create this house. Now, of course, everyone is at their own level with building, but you simply can't deny the speed and efficiency of this mod. But we have to get even faster, fast enough if we want to build the final project. On the last week of this challenge, we'll spend 7 days on one single project to see if I've actually gotten better at building. So stay tuned for that. For day 2, I wanted to challenge myself with something out of my comfort zone. Organics. Oh my god help. I am not so great at organics, basically because I don't ever do them. But Axiom lets us create curved lines using the path tool, which makes things a lot easier for my brain. This little flower actually took a lot longer than I expected, mostly because there was a tool I hadn't learned about that'll make stuff like this way easier. I'll learn about it later. I was running out of time to build tonight, it was getting pretty late, so I slapped on a gradient using the gradient painter and made a few adjustments by hand. Honestly, it's not great, but it was the second day, so I wasn't expecting perfection. On day 3, I wanted to follow a sketch from Pinterest that I thought looked awesome. Starting with this cool shaping tool, we can create really nice looking terrain with very little effort. In retrospect, this was an ambitious build for day 3 of this challenge, but making mistakes is the best way to learn. This turned out to be a lot of super cool shapes, but I knew that the scale I had built on would make texturing and detailing very difficult. So I tried to recover this build on day 4, and what better way to do that than by building some really ugly trees. In all honesty, I was super busy, and my mind was just not in the right place to be building. I was really forcing it this day for the challenge, and was not inspired. I'll admit, the trees were a nice addition to the composition. Now, what to texture with? Dude, just use sponges and glazed terracotta to texture! Easy fix! You know what? Screw it. I will. Uh, you know I was joking about that. Oh, <laughs> I got this. And 
at that point, I, I was just done with this build. It's not that bad. And on day five, I built nothing. I technically failed this challenge if you want to look at it that way. Today I was quite honestly not motivated. Balancing school, sports, hobbies, and a job is hard. I got home at 9pm and was just plain tired. It was time to get some much needed rest. And wow, something happened to me when I slept because when I woke up, it felt like I was a new person. I was ready to master Axiom no matter what it took. Guys, you're ruining my cinematic moment. Oh, right. Oh, I'm sorry you about that. Like, you look so <laughs> cool didn't mean to. Yeah, yeah. no! <sighs> Forget it. It's fine. On day 6 and 7, I focused on one big project, and that was building in a style I've never built in before. So I started placing some shapes, vaguely following this concept art on Pinterest, and really just trying my best to have a win after I made something I wasn't super happy with. I spent an hour creating the shape, then I was so excited to texture this that the first thing I did when I woke up on day 7 was not be responsible and do my homework. It was start coloring the thing and doing some detailing. I followed the concept art pretty close on this because I'm not the greatest with colors, but what did turn out great was the use of cherry planks on the roof. I didn't expect it to look so good, and considering this was a major step away from the reference, I was sort of proud of myself for that one. Okay guys, I'm really proud of this, but you may notice that some of this is not actually done. Look, I got this like metal pole I want to add. Don't worry, it will get done. Oh no. That's fixed. But I have plans. I have plans, so let's move on to day 8 and I'll explain to you what I mean. I kind of lied. I'm not going to explain exactly what I have planned until this next project is actually finished. So on day 8, I was hit with a pretty cool idea. What if I made a giant landscape? And not just using any reference image, using my own reference image. That's right, as you can see, my reference image is immaculate. We have some big rocks on the side, a bunch of grassy areas fading into the distance, and of course, a winding path through the middle that leads to a giant question mark. Unfortunately, we're gonna exclude that because that plan kind of fell through, but that's okay. So jumping in game to create this terrain, I used the shape tool to generate some really cool planes with the convex tool. After establishing a kind of base, I then created some rocks using the rock tool and started carving out these big gray shapes we see in the concept art. With an hour of work, we got this. And also I was struggling. Mossy cobble, let's see what that does. Absolutely not the right thing. Inevitably though, I did finish the terrain, and it looks pretty dang awesome. I'm happy with it. On day 9, all I did was add some grass and some flowers to the terrain, that was it, but I was sending some progress updates to my friends on Discord, and Havid was really fond of this place. Ash, this is so cool! I, I want this! I want this in my map! So I stuck with this terrain, not realizing there's kind of a big flaw that I'll explain later. Okay, it's day 10, and what awesome thing are we going to do? Nothing. My power went out, there was a big storm in my area, so I lost all the footage. But I did finish a previous build, like I promised, and it's on our new piece of terrain. So that's what its purpose is, and hopefully by the end of it, it looks kind of like an Axiom village. Now that terraforming project was super cool, but today I want to challenge myself with something I'm not as skilled at. Texturing. You see, I just need to get a little better at it if we want to actually- TASH! Oh my god! <sighs> Hi. Uh, where'd you come How's from? Hi, uh, wow. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm always around, you know, just lurking. All so, right. I heard you want to get better at texturing, yeah? Uh, that's- that's true. Uh, thanks for eavesdropping on my- my monologue there. <laughs> oh, no problem. Of What's course. up? So, I have, I have the perfect thing for you. Come this way. Alright. What is sure, this? Sure. Oh, this is so cool, dude. Wow. So this is a marvel of modern engineering. This All right. is my brand new, super duper, ultra complicated, made with the most advanced redstone and command blocks in the world, block randomization oh, okay. machine. Whew. That sounds so, incredible. So you're telling me this machine will randomize blocks and you want me to like texture or make a build with those blocks exactly yeah it's gonna give you the most random blocks you've ever seen and right. you're gonna have to figure out how to texture with them all right are you ready for this 
Yeah. You know, it's it's pretty advanced stuff using some advanced Just computer science the algorithms. algorithms. Uh, here we go. Um, Just uh, click that. Do the final click touches. That. And uh, yep, yeah, there we go. I think that should be all done. Just turn the machine off. And there we go. Now the oh, hold on a sec. Ooh, uh, oh, ooh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Huzzah! Perfect landing. Perfect landing. Um, well, let's so now in this the chest. <laughs> yeah, the most random blocks in all of Minecraft. You could not possibly guess what is in this chest. Okay. Yeah. Let, you well, will do just as good of a job at guessing what is in this chest as I did a good job landing from up there. <laughs> go ahead. Go all on. Right. Okay. I'll open. It. All right. Ooh, uh, prismarine, wow, black concrete powder and stone slabs? Dude, that thing is so random, what the heck? Oh my gosh, how am I, I gonna know. build with this? Yeah, alright, well, good luck, see you oh, later, oh, Ash, okay, bye! Okay, okay, but, uh... You see, the tricky part about this is that prismarine changes colors. It's an animated block. Not only that, black concrete powder is super dark, and will obviously contrast a lot. My vision was to create just a Japanese-styled home with black roofs, and the shaping was fine, I actually thought the shape looked pretty cool. The real problem came when I started texturing, because trying to get prismarine and black concrete powder to work together, well, it felt pretty impossible to be honest. The way it changes from blue to purple was throwing me off so much, but we got there in the end. Now we just finished the backside, add some details, maybe some greenery and trees, and oh, wow. I guess the build is done now. But before we do anything, we've got to paste this new house into our terrain. Nope. Uh, nope. Hmm. This terraforming is too small for my builds? Yeah, remember when I said this terrain would be a problem in the future? Well, this is what I meant. Eh, whatever. Guess I'll just have to build bigger next time. I was almost two weeks into this challenge, and after quite a few structures, I figured it was time to try some organic builds. After all, we had basically just built a flower so far that was subpar. So, using a great tree by Grace and Builds as reference, I pretty much copied everything about it to get some good practice. The leaves were the hardest part. It took me a bit of time to get the correct shape and amount of air between the leaves, but we got there. On day 13, I stepped up my game big time. You won't want to miss this next build, because it's an epic fire dragon. With an organic build, mind you I'm not good at these, shape and form is arguably the most important, and it takes a true master of building to get the anatomy, form, and scaling right. I'm no master, obviously, but I had axiom and a dream, so nothing could stop me. Oh wow, a dragon? You're gonna build one of those? <laughs> never never seen one of those before. Uh, <laughs> what's next? Something more cliche? <sighs> well, it's gonna be cool, okay? And wait, where did you come from? Oh, uh, you know, I'm just always watching you every second of your waking life. See you soon. To get the shape right, I pretty much only use the shape tool and the path tool. The path tool is the one we used on that flower earlier, and I use it to create the body and wings. But then, I use this smart surface mode that it has in it to create the bends and spikes inside this dragon. I could have really messed with everything by hand for hours, but since this challenge is all about practice, I stopped when I was mostly satisfied with it. Once we get to the final project, I'll be a lot more precise about everything. On day 14, there was a fire that ignited inside of me. This dragon turned out to be one of my favorite builds this entire challenge, and there's only one way to watch this dragon come to life. I didn't initially love the texturing, but I made a few tweaks and we ended up with this. It looks so amazing at night, in my opinion. What I kept thinking is how we're only about halfway done with this challenge. What else am I going to learn to build? Well, unfortunately, I'm gonna build something kind of gross. I mean, here's what I did on day 15, and this is objectively bad. It's way too massive. I mean, it's like 150 blocks tall. And I think I just got too excited after building what I thought was an absolutely amazing dragon. Clearly, I needed some help from a real builder to get under control. Avid, 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 avid. Ash, <sighs> what's up? Are you okay, buddy? What's going on? Everything's not okay. Uh, um, 
Um, it's, uh, so, wow, uh, hey, you did, did you really have to just put, it's too, what are you doing? Why did you put this in my world? I know, I know, I know, I, I, I built too big. Yeah, built yeah, too big, you built too big. You didn't have to drop it into my world like that. What were you thinking? Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Can, can you help me out? Can you help me build smaller? Yes. Please? Yes, of course. Just please get rid of that and I'll do anything you say. <laughs> Avid has been working on creating an adventure map for three years now, and so on day 16, I thought I would collaborate with him and create something awesome in this small little flower field. Emphasis on small. We eventually built up this cool little farmhouse with a garden and flowers all around it. It was beautiful, but that hill in the background, something just was urging me to terraform it. So after Avid left to go take care of important real life stuff, I took it upon myself to transform this mountain. Terraforming it was actually extremely easy with a new tool I discovered called the Elevation Tool. Let's just say terraforming got 100 times easier. I'll leave it at that. After adding a nice little stream, this is what we ended up with. I think I'll come back later and add some trees for Avid, but that's a future Ash problem. But now that I'm back to a solo project, let's see if I can redeem myself. Oh, uh, nope. I decided to go massive again. The shape of the ship is about twice the size of my largest ship I've ever built, so <laughs> let's see how this goes. And honestly, it didn't turn out too horrible. At least, the whole of the ship. This was all I could get done during day 17 and day 18, because I was running at a track meet on day 18, so I was quite literally unable to build, so that's sad. But on day 19, I knew it was time to finish the ship. Well, at least get as far as I could. Building ships was way harder than I remembered for some reason. I mean, it had been a good few months since I built my last ship, and it wasn't even close to the scale. What did make this extremely easy, though, was having access to Axiom's shaping tools. I was able to make all the ropes on this ship with with extreme ease, and it was super satisfying. I was scared to start texturing, but obviously, I had no choice. On day 20 and 21, it was time to start texturing. As I've said quite a few times, texturing isn't my best skill. I felt really happy with the shape and was determined to not mess it up. I knew I wanted this ship to be mostly brown, so it looked kind of like wood, with some super colorful sails to make it pop. All in all, after about four hours of texturing, I ended up with this really beautiful, undetailed mass of wood. So the next day I wanted to make everything come together. First thing I did was create some flags and crow's nests, nice. Then I wanted to retexture the sails to have a little bit more shading. It didn't make a huge difference in the end, but we're kind of at that detailing phase, it's all the small things that sort of just add up. The sides of the ship were just asking to be detailed, so I put in the necessities. Some cannons, a few more cannons, definitely more cannons, and some windows, obviously. If I had the patience to spend more time on this build, then I would have decorated the decks and captain's cabin and all those interiors, but I didn't. Yarg, me mateys, welcome aboard. Anyways, with just two days left until the final project, I wanted to start building something that I don't think I have enough practice in. Welcome to day 22, where I need to use every tool I've learned so far to create the best terraforming possible. I've been getting so fast at using all these tools, and after just 30 minutes, we had a really cool shape, just like that. When it came to texturing, I think I did a lot better than our first terraforming project. I can't say that I'm a master at this whole terraforming thing yet, but I'm definitely getting better at it. After a couple hours of messing around, we ended up with a pretty unusual piece of land. It's got a lot of blue in it, I think we'll build something pretty magical the next day. The very next day, it was Saturday, and I built like crazy. First things first, I built a shape for this super cool portal. It doesn't really work, so it's just for aesthetics, but we'll get to that after we build the house on top of the hill. I needed to prove to myself that I was confident enough with structures so that I wouldn't fail our final week of this challenge. This house took a long time, but I promise, it's well worth it. And finally, the portal needed some texturing too. It would be super rad if it actually worked, but eh, maybe I'd get Avid to code that in or something. Believe it or not, we're not done with this build. Alright, now where is he? Oh hey Lance, did you just activate the portal? I didn't even know it worked. <laughs> well this is great, I was about to go start working on the- No, nope, 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 you've been building for 8 hours, you need to go outside and touch some grass. But, but- I haven't done any interiors you gotta, this, you, this you challenge. You gotta take a break. Sometimes it's okay to just relax, <sighs> get some food, drink some water, stand up, do a few stretches. One, two, three. No. Go outside. No, 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 no. Go, I can't. Gotta I gotta. Go I gotta. No. You gotta go. You gotta go outside. <sighs> go get some sunlight. Vitamin okay. D is important. <sighs> Real grass. <sighs> okay. Fine. <sighs> 
this land sky making me touch grass. <sighs> Wait, I just realized it's the final project. That's right, today is the day we start the final project. And I gotta say, I was really excited. So what are we doing with this project? Well, one of my good friends drew up this incredible illustration, and I wanted to build it in Minecraft. That's it, really. But this isn't just any friend. This was one of my best building friends during the pandemic. We used to make some incredible stuff together, but he doesn't build anymore. And that's okay, I'm happy for him. And this is definitely not my intent at getting him back into Minecraft. No, oh, I wouldn't do that. I respect that he has a life and all that, obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course. Anyways, on the first day, I built the entire shape of the terrain and castle. I was astoundingly motivated for this project. I mean, I've only been hyping it up for 24 days now. The next day, I I textured the terrain, trying to keep it pretty simple, and I built some tree designs to then paste around the mountains using this stamp tool thingy. And with all that preamble out of the way, it was time for the big bouncy castle in the middle. I tried so many different colors and textures, but ended up going with a light grayish white palette. After all this building practice, I thought building this castle would be easier, but it was definitely challenging. Throughout this entire challenge, I learned a lot but texturing is still totally my weak spot, and in future projects, it's gonna be my mission to get it perfect. Over the next few days, I watched this castle come together, and no doubt, it was something to be proud of. But it was day six, just two days left, and something bad happened. I got burnt out. Almost a whole month of building every single day had me tired, and I realized there was no way around it. Some of you may not like it, but I ended up forcing myself to take two days off to refresh and finish this challenge strong. After all, mental health is much more important than some block game challenge. But let's go ahead and finish this project. After those two days, I came back and started building some houses to place around. And some of you might be wondering why I wanted to do this as my final project. Well, of course I wanted to bring my friend's drawing to life but it's my dream to create a Minecraft map of my own. I've had this dream ever since I watched Jerrycraft back in 2018, and also drooling over Shovel's World the past year or so. In case you're not familiar with those guys, go check them out, they have amazing content. In all my years of building, I never thought I could get so close to the level of skill these guys have. But after this challenge, I've gained so much confidence in my abilities. Do I love every build I made? No. Do I even love this final castle project? No. But I'm one step closer to mastering building, and it's all thanks to Axiom making building more accessible than ever. The best part? I truly believe now that anyone can become a great builder. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you in the next one.